Amelia here. I'm just checking that everything's working before I get started, so I just wait. I think there's a little bit of a time delay before comments can come through. We did a little tester yesterday, so I'm just going to see, make sure it's all working. This is my studio. It's 10 o'clock at night here, it's very late. Never been here this late ever, so it's very weird to be here. I'm waiting for a sign that this is actually transmitting. Any sign? <laughs> One person, three people watching. Hello. If you could put the thumbs up if you could hear. Could you give us a message just to let us know that we're actually working? Because we don't know until we get some response. Ah, uh, Nikki Ash has liked the live video, so I think we're live. Thank you, Nikki Ash. We're here. Thank you very much for responding. So, hello, welcome. This is my studio. It's very late. It's 10 o'clock here. It's dark outside. It feels very strange to be here. Um, so I'm just going to do a bit of sculpting tonight. Um, this is a portrait I'm working on of my husband, Ben. Ben is also here, so if you hear another voice, that's who's going to be talking. He's going to hopefully read out some questions, if you have any questions for me. Um, so, yeah, whatever you want to know, ask me a question. Just want to get it out of the way right at the beginning, because I know people are going to ask me what clay I use. So, let's just show you. This is UK only modelling clay. It's water-based clay. You can only get it here, but... Really, it doesn't matter what clay you use. Can I just get that out there? Please don't worry. There's not a clay that's going to make your sculpt better. It's just that I like this one because it's got a nice, fine finish. It's pale coloured. It photographs well. I'm used to it. It's as simple as that. Like, whatever clay you can get where you are, just go with that. But I prefer working with water-based clay. But, you know, a lot of people work always with oil-based. It depends what finish you're going for. Like, if you're going to do a silicon figure, with all skin texture and everything, then you might want to use an oil-based clay. I, if I'm doing something smaller, do use plastiline or chivant. So, I'll show you. If I'm doing something like this, is something I'm working on. It's really not finished at all. It's like quarter life size, just a little seated figure. So this is in plastiline. Uh, show you the tube. This is a tube of plastiline. I think this one is 55. That stuff might be a little bit softer. It's just whatever I've got hanging around the studio, to be honest. Never quite sure what it is I'm sculpting with half the time. So I use that, or sometimes this stuff that I get from Tarantes is also oil-based clay. And sometimes I use this for like hands or something, if I'm sculpting like a third life-size figure. The hands are too small to sculpt in water-based clay, so I'll just sculpt them out of that. How's it all going? Yeah, we've got uh, Helena Lira, says hi from Brazil. Hello, Helena. Um, <laughs> uh, Arnold Goblin says Monster Clay is a good choice too. You don't oh, that. Monster Clay. Yes, I haven't tried Monster Clay. I'll have to try it at some point. I've heard very good things about it. So, I'm just going to work on this sculpture I'm doing. So, this sculpture is life size. It's Ben, my husband. Um, I started it from life. And then I switched over to working from photos just because, you know, people are busy. So I took some measurements, started sculpting, and then I just took some photos going around his head. So one's from the front and then going around different angles so I can just see him from every angle. Because basically, when you're trying to sculpt a likeness, you want to always bear in mind that you've got to look at it from every angle and not get too obsessed with one angle or trying to make it match up with one picture or something. So that's what I'm just going to start doing. And if you've got any questions or anything, please ask. And I'll be more than happy to answer your questions. So I usually, when I'm starting to a session of sculpting, I'll start off just with the front, just straight away and just see how it's looking because like when you first open it up you've got fresh eyes so it's like right I'm going to use my fresh eyes where I haven't already got used to it looking the way it looks and just be like boom does it look like it 
uh, and then you see all your mistakes and you're like, oh no. So, so I'm going to start off looking at the eyes because if the eyes are looking right, then that's you're winning, basically. And the eyes are always different in every picture. So I usually just pick one picture and be like, that's the eye position that I'm doing. Because then look at all the other pictures and they're never quite exactly that eye position. So I just pick one and go with it. So this, this sculpture is pretty close to being done now. I'm not going to take it to like a super smooth finish. Like a lot of the work that I do is for uh, wax museums. So they're really, really tight finish. But I actually really like a more sketchy finish like this. So I'm going to uh, keep the surface quite sketchy. Is it all transmitting okay? Ben? I believe so. Nikki Ash says she loves your work. Oh, thank you very much. Um, and forgive me if I'm saying this wrong, but uh, not Rio Saber Pin Pin says she, they're watching and ready to be impressed. Oh. <laughs> and Brad <laughs> no Shippet, pressure. Brad Shippet says this is awesome. Big shout out to the oh, oh my God, Shiflet Brothers, thank you so much for asking me to do this. I'm so nervous tonight. I don't really know what to say. I'm just spouting anything that comes into my head. But thank you, I'm so honoured. I love the Shiflet Brothers Forum. It's amazing. It's just so fun being able to connect with other sculptors because, you know, I work most of the time on my own. So it's just like a lifeline to be able to see that there's all these other people sculpting away. We've got people in from India and Boston. Hello, India and Boston. And Chip sending cheers from Italy. I think we've even oh. got someone watching from Seaford. Oh my God, hometown. Seaford. <laughs> that is my hometown. And Jared says, thank you very much, we're honoured. Well, we're honoured too. Oh, yeah, thank you, right. Jared. Thank you, Jared. Thank you for taking care to make sure that we did this right, because we really didn't know how to do it. Never done this before, so it's all something new. Got another Brazilian. Oh, and Much hello. more praise for your work. Oh. I'm sure it's the model though, really, on this occasion. I think it is. Does the model want to actually come round and just have I'll a little see. pose? Well, <laughs> not in deputation. So, oh, I'm trying not to chip up on the tripod. There you go. How's that? Mm. Here he is. I don't know what you can see. It is Maybe you need to come this side. There he is. Look. Come stand next to it. Do you want to make way? You need to just, and then look up a little bit less down. Yeah. So, there he is. <laughs> that might be the camera where I, I should be. <laughs> Yes, this sculpture is the dreaded sort of a little hint of a smile, which can often be the hardest expression to do. Like sometimes it's easier just to do a big full smile, because then you know how much of a smile to do, but sort of the difference between a sort of pained expression and, a, and an actual warm half smile is really difficult to get sometimes. It doesn't help either, does it? Beard. Oh, I thought you said beer then. Not, uh, <laughs> not sure. <laughs> yes, beards can also be challenging because uh, they cover up a lot of the mouth area. So, yeah, that was a challenge on this one. Helen O'Leary said, How did you become sculptor and who inspires you? Oh, okay. Um, that's a good question. Um, so, I went to art school here in England. I went to Wimbledon School of Art and I did a degree in kind of, it's called Technical Art Special Effects, so it's for working in the film industry, so I did that for a while and then I went to Florence Academy and I studied there for two years um, and then I worked at Madame Two Swords for about ten years, but what made me want to do it? I just like making things, I like making anything really, like, I love sculpting but I also like sewing and making things out of cardboard, anything really. I just like making things. But yeah, sculpture is my favourite thing, I think. And sculpting people definitely is the best thing of all. Uh, who inspires me? God, 
I love the internet. I find it amazing. I love being able to see all other sculptors work around the world. I find it so inspiring. My brain's gone completely blank. Uh, can't remember anyone now. Uh, all, loads of people that I've worked with have inspired me. You know, I've worked alongside some amazing sculptors. Um, can't think. <laughs> 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 I'll come back to that one later. Uh, Ruth, Ruth Marshall says amazing. Oh, hello, Ruth. <laughs> That's nice. Um, and I can't see the comments sort of disappear, but uh, somebody in East Bourne is watching as well. So we've got East Bourne. local East Sussex people. Sussex, excellent. Um, I did have a load of stuff for bed, and my brain has gone completely blank now. Um, can't think of what I was going to say. Okay, here's a quite interesting question. Oh yeah. Um, do you have a quality standard, or do you just keep going until you feel it's done? I think is the question. Oh, that is a good question. Um, yes, it is a case of well, what I find is when I'm sculpting, it's so up and down all the time. So I start off and like this is going so well. I've nailed this. Brilliant. And the next minute, oh, it's terrible. It's the worst thing I've ever sculpted. And then it goes up and down like that all the way through. And I don't even know if it's good anymore. And then by the time I've almost completely lost my mind, I'm like, oh, actually, I think it's okay. And once you get to that stage, you should just leave it and walk away. <laughs> yes. That's pretty much the best you can hope for. But of course, a lot of the work that I do is for clients. So it's got to get their approval. So I have to get to that stage with how I feel about it. And then... I ask them what they think about it and then they've got their thoughts and then it's like, you know, then it's working towards a common agreement that it's all okay in the end. But yeah, it's, it's a difficult process. And how long did it take them to start to finish? Uh, well... That was Karen, by the way, you asked that question. Hello, Karen. Um, for a... It depends what finish, basically. So if it's like a really fine finished for... A, museum or something so really realistic figure I always allow up to five weeks but um, it can be less so I'd say on average is about three weeks but sometimes they take longer sometimes they take shorter it just depends on how much reference you've got and um, how many photos there are often <clears throat> when the person was alive like if they were alive if you're doing them Ironically, if you're doing someone from like the 60s or something, there'll be really good quality photos of them. But then if you're doing someone that was famous in the 80s or 90s, a lot of the pictures are really grainy and they're really difficult to work from. So that can be more challenging. But then if someone is famous currently, there's absolutely loads of brilliant digital images of them, so it's much easier. Uh, Charlotte from Denver, Colorado says hi. I think she Hello. recently bought your course, actually. Oh, that's nice. I hope you're I'm enjoying it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I hope you're finding it helpful. Uh, yeah, with the course, I just tried to put everything that I've learned over the years into, you know, one place and just try and make it the most useful way of learning how to sculpt a good likeness because it's very different sculpting. A generic head than sculpting an actual likeness of someone specific so I just tried to make it as useful as possible to sculpt a particular likeness of a person because I think sometimes those kinds of that kind of information is harder to find or I, I found that when I was trying to learn. Karen says thanks for the answer. Oh. Marco says hello from Brazil. Hello Marco. So does Cristiano. Hello, Christy, a very international I? audience. <laughs> yes. Jared very kindly says the course is amazing. Oh, thank you, Jared. Yes, well, we're actually working on the next course at the moment, uh, which is going to be called Useful Anatomy. So, the idea for that is, I am going to do one on how to sculpt the figure, and I was going to jump straight into doing that next, but then I thought, actually, it's kind of crazy to do a figure when you don't, if, like, I'm just presuming that people haven't had the kind of education that I have had. And so I just thought, do you know what, I'm going to start with the basics and actually go back and do some anatomy before I do have sculpt figure. So the anatomy course is going to be all the components of the skeleton, working 
down the whole body, so skull, ribcage, pelvis, arms, legs, hands, feet, and then the muscles of those areas as well. But just kind of break it down to the most useful stuff, because I don't know about you, but when I've picked up an anatomy book, it's just completely overwhelming. There's, there's so much. There's, there's too much information. I don't know what, what to read and not what, to, what not to read, what's going to actually help me sculpt a better figure. So I've just broken it down to like the most useful bits that actually impact the surface of the body and try and help you to understand the mechanics of how the body moves and how it works. Okay, we've got someone from Mexico now. Charlotte says she's wrapping up the course, which is brilliant. Oh, excellent. That's great to hear. And hello to Mexico as well. <laughs> this is such a strange experience. <laughs> Especially at quarter past ten. I know, quarter past ten at night. I'm usually kind of snoozing on the sofa by now, so this is particularly weird. <laughs> and I know it's daytime in a lot of the places that you are, so very, very weird indeed. Um, I'm not. I don't seem to be doing very much sculpting. Sorry. So, so yeah. If I'm starting a sculpting session, I'll start off with the front. Have a look at that. Try and look at it with fresh eyes, and then I'll just make myself then look at the profile pictures as well. So. So, I'm working from this side, so this is my profile picture for this side, so maybe I should show you it from side to side. So, so basically I'm looking at that outside profile to start off with. And then I'm looking at how far back things are, like the front of the eyes, the back of the nose, and just trying to look at it abstractly, look at the shape of the uh, eye socket, and just see how far that cuts back, and try and see that high point of the uh, zygomatic arch there, which is that bone that comes round the bottom of the eye socket, and comes round here to just above the ear hole and just try and see if that is looking accurate. So that's what I'm looking at. Tell me when you're ready for another question. Oh yeah, I'm ready for another question. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, oh, there we go. It is a good question. Oh yeah. Um, how much ex public exposure do you get as a sculptor? So he's, uh, I think it's a he, probably if it's not. Uh, the person's asking if... Um, like everyone can see your work in the museum, but do you feel you get recognition as a sculptor for it, or do you feel like it's, I'm assuming, the wax museum? Um, that is a good question. Yeah, I mean, the internet is great because I get to share my, the, my part in a waxwork because a waxwork is actually loads of people's work. Like I would never take credit for anyone else's work. That's why I only ever share pictures of the clay because that is the only bit that I do. I'm not a painter, I don't do hair insertion, eyes, teeth, any of that stuff. And those people are amazingly skilled as well. So, um, yeah, so when a figure is in a museum, I, I can't take credit for that because it's a team effort. But um, I, I'm really proud and people like it. But I know that wax museums are also fun places where people go and enjoy saying that they don't look like the person. <laughs> like, I'm not under any illusions that everyone goes there and, and it is in awe of my work at all and everybody else's work. I would love to do more of my own work and sell it, but it's that's not the world that I have gone into. I've always worked for a living. I've, I've always worked as a sculptor. I've always been paid for my work and I feel very lucky to do that. Would I love to be a brilliant, famous artist in my own right? 100%. Do I know how to do that? No, I don't. <laughs> so that's all I can say on that. Uh, here's a question you probably do know the answer to. Um, when you're working on a waxwork commission, how do you decide the facial expression or what pose? Ah, that's a good question as well. So that is usually a discussion with the client. And, you know, I will often have a say in that, but it isn't ultimately often my decision. But I can tell you the thought process that goes into that is usually, is it an expression that captures that person's personality? Is it an expression that they do all the time? 
and I will always push for it to be that expression because I know I've seen figures and worked on figures that don't work as well and it's when they say oh I want to capture this one moment where someone's like screaming something and they literally have never done that face before or after and then you know the poor sculptor is like I have no reference for this so it's really hard to make it look realistic and also it doesn't encapsulate the person's personality so it, I think those figures work less well sorry Carl going past um, I would always go with an expression that that person always does so yeah just do loads of research. That's my, that's my default expression. This is Ben's, uh, <laughs> sort of, is he smiling or not? He's enigmatic, what can I say? Uh, <laughs> is it just his beard? <laughs> yes, we said beard that time, Jared, not beard. <laughs> um, Jackson Christian says, hey, how's it going? Hey, Jackson, hello. Nice to speak to you weirdly like this. Charlotte's got a good question. Oh, yeah. Um, I can read it all. Mm -hmm. Have to me. Sometimes uh, it tantalisingly shows me the start of the question. And I've got to somehow press to see more without... Oh. Um, well, I'm very glad that you're doing the technical side of things. Because basically, all I can do is share stuff on Instagram. That's all I'm actually able to do. Okay, I'll come back to Charlotte's question because I can't see, I, I can, can tantalise the see the beginning of the question. I think oh, maybe Charlotte could write it again? Would that uh, help? You might do. Charlotte, I, I've got up to, it is a full on smile with teeth. What advice would you, so I don't know what question it is, so if you could write I the question think. again, that would be, that'd be helpful. <laughs> Marcus uh, wants to know how important is the drawing to figurative sculptures? Oh, uh, what drawing on the shapes? Is that, or just actually drawing from life? Both are very useful. I'd say, you know, sculpting is kind of a difficult thing to just be at home and be like, hey, I'm just going to do a sculpture because you've got to make an armature and get some clay and all stuff like that. But you can always do a drawing, pretty much, if you've got a pen and paper. So, yeah, really good practice, always. And particularly drawing profiles. I would say if you, if you want to do some practice, it's going to be really, really helpful for your sculpting. Draw someone in the profile position and just really focus on that outline. And it will just really help to train your eye because honestly, the most important thing with sculpting a likeness is training your eye. It's not kind of tips and tricks and drawing a grid or any of those things. Like really all it is is practice trying to make yourself see better and the only way that you're going to do that is just by stretching yourself pushing yourself trying to do things that not taking the easy route so like i know a lot of people see that i draw a grid sometimes like when i'm doing a waxwork and that's just to save time and i do cut out the profile but that's because i've done so many heads before i ever started doing it that way and i just do that because it helps with the accuracy when it's got to look exactly like the person but there's so much more to portraiture than just measuring and focusing on the front and the side. Like you just got to keep working around it. James made an interesting point. I think he's referring to the uh, source material available about that digital cameras made such a difference. Oh yeah, they have made such a difference. Like when I'm sculpting a figure of someone that's been a star since like the last ten years, it's like oh so much easier. <laughs> I love doing those figures because there's loads of pictures of them at kind of red carpet events and stuff and they're all on a zoom lens as well so you know that they're taken from a good distance and you've got no foreshortening or anything and they're really good quality and you can zoom in and like blow it up big. Yeah, amazing difference. It's probably because they get shared on the internet digitally as well. The yeah. original, you're working from material that you find, aren't you? So yeah. in the 80s and 90s, it tends to be scans of magazines and things like that. Yeah, so you don't, totally. That's the real, and magazines that's, used to be so grainy. Yeah. Like, yeah, when I did Tupac recently, so grainy all the images of him because he was big in the 90s, you know. There's barely any good quality pictures of him. So I think Charlotte's just looking for... Um, some general advice uh, about uh, just wanting to sculpt one with a big 
toothy smile. A big smile, yeah. Um, and any advice I think she's looking for about, you know, where to start with that, really? Okay. Uh, smile's difficult because people do slightly different versions of their smile all the time. If you can find a few pictures of them from different angles doing the exact same smile, that is going to help you so much. If you've only got one picture of the smile that you want, that's really, really hard. Um, also, if you can get any pictures of them like with their head tipped back so that you can see the curve of their teeth, that is going to really help because how far forward their teeth are makes a big difference as well because also it's like pushing out the um, because when someone smiles it's like their lips are stretched across the muzzle area so like they're quite close to the front but yeah if you can find any pictures from underneath that's going to really help you to get that curve right because if if it's too wide like that the curve is going to look wrong and if it's too narrow as well um, and just try and be really specific about the actual teeth because, you know, I know I've done figures in the past and the sculpture is the same, but if the teeth are very slightly different, like in the finished figure, in the resin, it makes a total massive difference to their likeness because people, people's teeth are a big part of their character. Um, and, yeah, I always find when I'm doing those sort of figures that I can't get the teeth really smooth enough until the clay is really really dry so it's quite near the end that I can go in and really make those shapes of the teeth specific and really correct. Jared's got a shallow question for you. Oh yeah. Have you met any of the celebrity sculpted? Obviously you've met me. Um. <laughs> yes I have actually met him amazingly. Uh, I have met some of them. Uh, mostly not but uh, I did have a brilliant job a few years ago I, for Joran, uh, who is a Swedish amazing special effects guy, and we got to sculpt and meet all the members of ABBA, which was really exciting. And that was really cool, because we actually went around the houses and stuff. When I worked at Madame Two Swords, most of the time, uh, sometimes people would come in, but I was a freelancer, so I never like went to sittings and stuff. So even if they actually came in for a sitting, I often just didn't meet them. So mostly just from photos. Um, so what's up for your sculpting tripod stands are from? Okay. Oh, or are they homemade? Ah, oh, tripod stand. I'm not quite sure what you mean. Do you mean this actual? The turntable thing, because these are from Tarantes, which is a shop in London. That's where I get them. Uh, the, this bit I just make myself. Um, I cover this in my course. It's just like a post with some brackets and some armature wire. Um, there's a more specialised stand that I use for the waxworks, which is a kind of car jack, which means that you can adjust the head up and down which is useful when you're working from found photographs because when you're working from photographs it you know are just people out and about it helps to be able to adjust it to the angle that you're looking at it from but you don't need one of those to sculpt your head. What did you uh, use as your stand when you first sculpted your head? Oh. <laughs> My first head I just had a cupboard <laughs> and a stick <laughs> digging out of a post. So you really don't need fancy stuff. Like main thing is the main thing always is just good reference. The best thing ever is just sculpting from life. If you can go to a local class or something like that, because it's just so much easier. You can see the forms. And if you've sculpted even one head from life, it just makes you understand like some of the forms that are so hard to see in photos, like this area so hard to gauge in photos how how much material is there there like does it really cut back or is it really really shallow it's just so hard to read especially when people have uh, skin contouring makeup on that is a nightmare I hate skin contouring makeup <laughs> uh, okay sorry if I'm saying anyone's name is wrong but uh incorrectly but uh, Gino uh, he's um, said um, 
Uh, he's apologised for having lots of questions, but he's excited, That's I think, good. to uh, be able to ask <laughs> questions of you. Because I just, um, my mind goes blank otherwise. So, so he's, he's just asking really about uh, tools, so it's sort of similar to oh, the yeah. um, other one. Do you use any specific tools? Uh, and are there any quirks about your technical process that's out of the ordinary? Oh. Uh, I think a, a workshop secret. <laughs> I don't know, really. I mean... Nothing's unusual to myself because it's just the way I've always done it. But yeah, the tools I use, they're basically, so with water-based clay, I always use wooden tools, like either S-shaped tools, like, oh, what's that one? So that's an S-shaped tool. So this is like a subtle S-shape. So those or straight ones with like a little pointy bit on the end. And a round bit on the end is also very useful. Uh, I like these ones. These ones are great for these areas. Convex areas can often be really difficult to actually get into. And also, this is like my favourite tool ever, and it's so close to breaking. It's got so much glue around the end. I've glued it so many times. And once these break, they're gone. So you just have to keep backing them up with loads and loads of epoxy glue. But I use this for everything. So it's like a wire-ended tool? So it's one? like a wire-ended loop tool. And you get them from Tarantes? Tarantes, yeah. I, I get most of my tools from Tarantes. Uh, I have got lots of other tools. Sculpture House is also really good in America. Um, yeah. so, Sandra's asking for a close-up on the tools. I might uh, move over in a minute and, uh, okay. and, and show you. <laughs> Let you have a glass of water. <laughs> Uh, when, when we do that, Sandra, if that's okay. Uh, what's your, what was your most difficult sculpture? Oh, my most difficult portrait, believe it or not, was Marilyn Monroe. Just, even though she's the most photographed woman ever, she always wanted to be photographed from one side because she didn't like her side the other side because she had a bit of a bump in her nose one way and not the other way. And also, like, all the famous pictures of her are <laughs> with her head flung back. And then you get loads of foreshortening. Like, the best photos that you can get are, like, straight on. And then, you know, every angle going around. And if you're lucky, like, some from the back of the head as well. So, like, ones like this. Like this. Or this. So you can see... You can see the shape of the forehead and how it cuts back and the shape exactly what the cheek is doing. You know, like so much of a smile, you can be working on it like, oh, why doesn't it look like it's smiling? And it's not the mouth at all. It's the cheeks aren't smiling or the eyes aren't smiling. And you don't even see that until you look at it from another angle. So I would say if you're really struggling with a sculpture from one angle and like, oh, it doesn't work from this angle, you know, just keep going. And often... You'll be working on it from another angle, turn it around and be like, oh, that problem is solved, I don't believe it. Oh, that was lucky. <laughs> um, Garrett was asking if you mould your own work and uh, what will happen to my head. <laughs> I do mould some of my... If it's just for me, yeah, I mould it. If it is for a paid job, no, I, gave, I give it to a professional because I'm not brilliant at mould making and I don't really like doing it, but I can do it and I do it for my own stuff. And what will actually happen to my clay when it's... Uh, uh, it will just dry out. <laughs> Be recycled. I, yeah, it will just end up in the recycling bin like all the rest of them. I just moulded a head actually, and it's just drying out now. But it's quite interesting because you can see how much it shrinks. Uh, probably can't move the... I can... I can really can't really put them next to each other. Really. Uh. But, well, this is one that's drying out. So this is nearly ready to be smashed into the recycling bin, but I wait till they're really dry and then they just smash straight off the armature, basically. So Pat Jackson was asking if you fire water-based clays, but you don't do it just No, not the technique that I use. I always work on an armature. So um, I know some people do actually work on an armature and then somehow slice it out and then put it all back together again because it's got to be hollow to be fired. But I, I just have never done that. I've, I've always just done stuff that is moulded. So I, I don't have any advice about that. But I, I, I always just think it sounds really risky because I think they can crack. So I don't know. Oh, interesting. Uh, Matt Willoughby asks, 
Do you sculpt in skin texture when doing a sculpt in wet clay? Or do you advise moulding and casting it in... Oh, oh like oil-based clay and then... Probably. Um, I have done that before. Um, yeah, like, I, I didn't used to do that, but uh, the client I've been working for lately has uh, requested that I put on a bit of skin pores, and it can do that fine. And that's fine for wax, because with wax you lose quite a lot of the detail. So, you know, if you're doing a silicon figure, there's a lot more in the skin, tiny, really subtle uh, lines and stuff, which I'm not really an expert in. But And also, if you're doing a silicon figure, the, the eye sockets, you really want to have the fake eyes in. Um, but I never sculpt like that because... Well, you don't have to with wax because they get burnt out anyway. But um, I always just think with doing that, it just makes you much more reluctant to move the depth of the eyes. And depth of the eyes is so important. Like if you've built your whole head and the eyes are the wrong depth and they're resin eyes embedded in clay and you know it's wrong, I can imagine just kind of being very reluctant to change it. And even if you don't know that you're doing it, sometimes you can be subconsciously reluctant to change. <laughs> um, Enrique, who's a fan of yours, we oh, know. Oh, hello, Enrique. Um, he's asked about, again, about asking about uh, doing a bust that's smiling and showing teeth. But he specifically wants to know whether you, you would start with the mouth area opening and then put the teeth inside, or whether oh. you'd start with the teeth and then sort of build the mouth outside. I don't think you'd do either, but... Um... I think what I usually do is, I just kind of like... So, I sculpt the whole face, and as I'm blocking out the shape of the mouth, like I'll always do it smiling from the start, and then just start off with like a really, just a sort of smooth, curved shape um, in where the teeth are, and then as it gradually gets tighter and dries out more, then you can start actually drawing in the specific teeth and carving them out more. That's... Shall I show a close up of these, um, these tools? Yeah. I mean, really, I use a different bunch of tools each time. It's just whatever's to hand, really. Okay, I've got it might get a bit jerky as I move oh, forward, so just bear with me a second. Oh, so there you go. Those are just the ones that I'm using right now, but. <laughs> There's a bunch more here, look. We'll I've just point out the EBS shape on the... Uh... So this is, this is my favourite tool. This is the one. This is the one that I always, in my mind, where's the one? I've lost the one! It's just an S-shaped small tool. But I've had this like since I was about 18. Love that tool. And then this is my second favourite tool. Loop tool. And then they're all pretty much variations of that. This one also is very useful. That end is useful for going in eyes. Um, and Jackson was also asking if we could see some of the, the uh, sculptures behind. Oh yeah. I'll just... It's a bit dark today because the, it's obviously so late. Um, So these are the third life size, these ladies. I quite like this size. This is like the smallest size that I do in water-based clay. But then I will do the hands in uh, oil-based clay, just because it dries out too much. But anything smaller than that, I would do it in oil-based clay from the start. <coughs> um, so this one I started off doing it from life with a friend of mine, and then I just finished it off just sort of from memory. And I cast it in jesmonite. That's jesmonite. These two are real bronze. They were sculpted just from photographic reference of a model that I got in. Oh, two different models, obviously. <laughs> um, this one is actually a prop from Ben's film that he's just finished. Ben's just made his first feature film, and this was one of the actresses, Sophia Capasso. Uh, she's in EastEnders. She was one of the main characters, and her... Um, character as an artist and she'd done lots of self-portraits a lot of self-portraits and she also sculpted herself 
This one I just finished. This is for, um, uh, this was actually a model that I got in to do the anatomy course. I just took some snaps of him and then I'm kind of between jobs and I thought, you know what, I'm just going to do a really quick sculpt because I just want to do a sketchy head and I just want to take some pictures of it step by step so that I can make a kind of worksheet for when I do classes. So I did that. So that one is literally just out of the mould. It's jasmineite with various different waxes on it. Not quite sure about the finish, looks a little bit mouldy, not sure. <laughs> Jewelry's out on that one. Um, it's another bronze with a marble base. This one is bronze resin with a load of black wax on it, a bit dark. And this is another Ben. You'll notice a theme here. Ben is basically an egomaniac, he loves <laughs> to be sculpted. <laughs> and this isn't even the only other one of him. So this is a little wizard, him being a thoughtful little sort of wizard gnome type person. This is Layla from the course. So if you don't know, I've made a, an online portrait sculpting course. So I show you step by step everything you need to know to sculpt a head. And I sculpt this head in the videos and it's all edited very well by Ben. So it's not like this. It's, <laughs> it's properly put together in a much more structured way. And I show you absolutely everything that you need from making the armature, measurements, measurement charts, um, how to do a photographic reference if you're going to do your own model, or there's a complete set of pictures so you can sculpt her along with me if you want to. So that's the finished one of that, and that is cast in just plain jesmonite. I really like jesmonite, I think it looks lovely, just really uh, plain on its own actually. But when things are a bit more textured I like to put a bit of coloured wax in just to bring it to life a bit. Oh, that's the best. Thanks for the show. That's great. That was a bit wobbly. I'm literally moving the tripod um, <laughs> around. I'm going to put the tripod back. Um, I'm nearly out of time. But uh, Charlotte wants to know about the difference between casting dark eyes and light eyes. I thought that might be quite interesting. Oh, yes, that's a good question. Um, just bear with me a second. That's a good question. The general rule of thumb is if someone's got very dark eyes, like. Well, I mean, pick, there's so many different ways to do eyes. I personally like to do them, I just think they read more like um, real eyes when you carve out the irises. But I know a lot of people, so when I'm doing my own work, something like this, a bit more sketchy, I don't put in the pupil. But if it's something very highly finished and it's like for wax work or something and you want it to read well in pictures, you're trying to get it signed off, stuff like that. I'll always put in the pupil as well. And the general rule is, if someone has very pale, eye, pale eyes, you would do it either very, very shallow, and then the pupil pushed in, or even fill in the whole thing and just draw in the shape of the iris and then put in the pupil. But that can look a little bit like wolf eyes. But only do that, I would say, if the person has incredibly, weirdly pale eyes, just because it will kind of look more like them. But if someone has very dark eyes, just go really deep and it will just make the shadows fall and make them read like very dark eyes. Um, when you're using your hands, this is a serious question, <coughs> uh, do you, I think it's about fingernails, but do, uh, do you deliberately keep your fingernails like clipped? And do you know deliberately. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I do notice it if like sometimes, yeah, when you're working, there'll be loads of little fingernail marks on it. Like, I couldn't have long nails if I wanted to. But also doing this sort of work, you couldn't anyway, and just get in the way. But yeah, they do mark the surface if they get beyond a certain length. Um, Garrett wants to know if you made those muppets. I certainly did make those muppets. <laughs> That's what Ben's film as well. <laughs> I love making stuff like that. <laughs> Do you want to share them? Oh, it's probably a bit dark over there. I don't see them. Oh, uh, Gordo's getting his head blown off. Sort of whipping up a bit of a storm here tonight, I think. Yeah, she's pretty amazing. I said I, said I wanted one, one puppet. And then I had to make three. <laughs> I had to make this yeah. one. This one. This one makes our dog so nervous to see if she wakes up. Yeah. Hello. Oh, I'm fast asleep. What are you doing, Beryl? Beryl. Oh, look. <laughs>
<laughs> she's angry. She's really, really angry. Woolly woo! Here she comes. <laughs> very, very jealous. She always wants to come and have a little say, don't you? Oh, I think that's us sort of done, is it? I think so. Any last, last minute questions? Everybody needs a dog in their studio, by the way. Very calming influence, aren't you? Any last minute Oh, questions? this is a very important one. Oh, yeah. This is the, this is the vital one. <laughs> and I'm going to say... I'm going to count down for your answer, okay? Um, which is your favourite Shiflet brother? Oh! Okay, ready? <laughs> Three, two, 